Alright, so I just got done watching Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, Season 1, Episode 6, Chapter 6, The Legend of Alice May. Uh, so in this episode, a exchange student comes to Crystal Cove High School. Uh, they've been spending more time in high school in this series, it appears. Uh, and uh, in the cold opening at the beginning of the episode, she uh, takes in this uh, this boy and says, I'm going to, you know, take, like, his, his prom night. And she pulls up in a limousine. She, she talks about how... Uh, She's been with other boys before to other proms, and he's like, weird, uh, weird, all right. And he's like, but I feel like you're the one. That's what, that's what this, uh, this girl saying. Her name's Alice May, obviously. It's in the title. And uh, she, she proceeds to sort of uh, turn into, you know, a monster and, uh, you know, fuck this guy up, basically. And then you end up in the, you know, in the whatever. She, and I think, I think what she moans is, be my boyfriend, Andy. Be my boyfriend, Andy. Something like that. There's a lot of good, uh, good, like, the show's starting to use a lot of, uh, like, really harness the 2010 sort of sense of humor and, 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 uh, dialogue, uh, effectively, I would say. Uh, apparently Shaggy and Velma have been dating for a month in this episode, we find out. Uh, it's their one month anniversary on the same day as a, a horror movie marathon that Scooby and Shaggy were, in, uh, at, Intending, intending, that's the word, intending on uh, watching, and, uh, base, and she, you know, she's upset that he would rather, obviously, rather uh, hang out with Scooby-Doo and eat a bunch of junk food, right? Who wouldn't, man? Like, I, I would much rather hang out with Scooby-Doo and eat junk food than go to prom at any given moment. Uh, so, Fred gets seduced uh, in this episode. Alice May exchanges to Crystal Cove uh, High School, and uh, immediately she has a hard time opening her locker in the middle of Daphne and Fred talking about prom. And uh, Fred's a smart guy. He can just, you know, listen in, and he knows what, exactly what brand this uh, lock is. You know, he's all into those those traps, those popular mechanics, and uh, op opens it up. And he's like, uh, and, you know, she's kind of impressed, and he starts showing her around the school because he's got a diagram of the school handy and helps, you know, it's easy to get lost, something like that, he says. He sort of drives her around, and then, uh, you know... Uh, he, at one point he says to Daphne that uh, on prom night he's probably going to be monitoring his police scanners and patrolling the sewers as opposed to bringing a girl to prom. Alice May convinces him otherwise. And then uh, there's like an assembly where they, they're warning uh, the students, uh, the main sheriff in the show, voiced by Patrick War Warburton of uh, you know Seinfeld and the Tick fame. Um, and yeah, uh, she, you know, she says that Fred's like my white knight. Which, again, very 2010 kind of thing. Uh, and it really shakes the fuck out of Daphne, you know? She really, like, you, like, you know, you genuinely felt for her. Like, I'm sure at some point everyone's been there. And uh, I, think, I think it helps introduce the younger audience to that sort of feeling of uh, not understanding why someone likes this person and not you when you've been around for so long or whatever. Uh, it's a, you know, it's, it, it's a reminder that the grass is always greener on the other side. Uh, you know, they end up in a graveyard uh, trying to find the, the ghost uh, the ghost car or ghost limousine girl, Phantom Limousine. I think that's what they call it, Phantom Limousine. And uh, Shaggy tells Velma that he'd rather watch the Scoop Marathon with Scooby-Doo, the horror movie Marathon with Scooby-Doo. And uh, she starts kicking down gravestones, just like no problem. Just like, yeah, kicking down gravestones. It was incredible. Uh, and then very quickly, the, the bad guy shows up. Uh, Alice May, out of mask and is looking like a witch, uh, hops on a gravestone, they, like, they, yeah, they start surfing on gravestones down in the hills for like a good 15 seconds of the show, and I was like, it was fucking weird, because I don't know, there's something about de defacing graveyards that, that you should not have without like big spiritual intentions in your, in your show, I had, a, I had a bit of an issue with that, um, we find out that Daphne has another sister, I think Daphne has four sisters, and she's the youngest, I believe. But Daphne has an older sister named Delilah, who's uh, in the military, and uh, comedically talked about gunning people down in comparison to boy problems, which, again, a little distasteful perhaps, but uh, definitely got the message across, added a little depth to the, the Daphne family. Uh, I would like to learn more about her family background. I hope we get the full meal deal on them. You know, Velma doesn't have a super compelling parent background. Shaggy doesn't really either. Fred's dad's mayor. Uh, 
yeah, you were like, I would really like to know what the deal is there. Because uh, they got a military, she's got tons of allergies, she's the rich. I don't know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the music that's playing during the prom is very, like, sounds like fucking, like, stock music, New Order. Which was strange and kind of cool. And whoever's doing the sound, uh, like you know, took an opportunity to put something cool into there. Uh, the The conclusion of this episode was very convoluted. It uses used a flashback from an episode that doesn't exist. You know, it takes place prior to the series uh, to explain certain things, which I found strange. And then at the end, it had this cliffhangery kind of thing where it ties into the ongoing story, and it, it negated the the reveal. Like it said. Like this, they they said that this uh, this girl Alice May was the daughter of a guy that the gang had caught before, and that he she was looking to seek revenge on the gang or something like that, and uh, that it didn't make a ton of sense based on how old the gang is, how old the girl would have been, and stuff. And I'm I'm not really sure what was going on there. But then at the very end of the episode, it it was all a fallacy, and it all ties into the big overarching plot of uh, these four similar you know, mystery-solving kids that got, uh, you know, went missing. Uh, that's that's the overarching plot. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in, in the reviews, but, uh, yeah, the overarching plot is there's four kids, very similar to the gang. They had a pet bird that went missing uh, 20 years ago in the Crystal Cove caves or something. And mystery is this sort of divine force leaving hints everywhere for the gang and, and misleading them and on them. So he, uh, he got a hired gun to... Uh, be Alice May and uh, create these false legends of uh, phantom limousines and, and prom night boys getting captured to mislead the gang and eventually get this yearbook in their possession which gave them a little more information about the kids that went missing 20 years ago. So I thought that this episode was uh, was alright. It was it was better than some of the, the worst episodes I've seen so far. It was not no, anywhere near as good as the last one. Uh, it was quite quite convoluted, but having it tie into the ongoing story at the end sort of made, made it more forgivable. Uh, for me at least, uh, I think I think kids and their parents will like, probably be frustrated by this. Thanks for watching.